Section 9.3 is hypothesis test for population means when the population standard deviation is unknown. That just means we're going to be doing a t-test. We use a t-distribution when we're testing a claim about a mean and the population standard deviation is unknown. We still want to use those same six steps though. Identify the null and the alternative hypothesis. Identify your alpha level. Draw a picture to model the situation. In that picture you want to list your critical value and we'll come back later and add our test statistic to it and shade your critical region. Then you want to find your test statistic and your p-value from the calculator. Then you make a decision and write your conclusion. We go through those same six steps. When we knew the population standard deviation we would use this to calculate our test statistic. It was a z-score now that's going to be a t-score instead of a z-score. So we don't know the population standard deviation, we use the sample standard deviation instead. We have the same two conditions that we have to assume, or the same two assumptions that we have to assume. We have to have a simple random sample and either your sample size is large or the population is approximately normal. One of those two things has to happen. That is either or. On your calculator, the t-test is right underneath the z-test. You have a choice of either using raw data or summary statistics. Here is an example problem. In a recent medical study, 76 subjects were placed on a low-fat diet. After 12 months, the sample mean weight loss was x bar equals 2.2 kilograms with a sample standard deviation of 6.1 kilograms. Can we conclude that the mean weight loss is greater than zero? This is what we look at to help us write our null and our alternative hypotheses. And that's our first step, is to write our null and our alternative hypothesis. H0 is going to be what? Zero. Look at what I have underlined in red. Remember, don't look at anything else other than what it is you're, you're testing the claim. We want to know, is the mean greater than zero? This x bar equals 2.2 is our sample mean. S equals 6.1. These are the numbers that we got after we collected our data. You should be able to write a null and an alternative hypothesis before you ever collect any data. Our alternative hypothesis is going to be mu is greater than zero. Our alpha level is what? And then we sketch a graph. Because I don't know the population standard deviation, I'm going to use a t-distribution, but the t-distribution is symmetric and unimodal. So I draw a shape that looks an awful lot like a normal distribution. Will my alpha level be in the left tail, the right tail, or both tails? Right tail because my alternative is greater than. So this area right here is 0.05, but I have to get this critical value using my calculator. I have to use inverse t. If you have the older operating system, you'll have to look it up on a table or download a graphing calculator that has the newer operating system. So we hit second, vars, inverse t is number four. My area is going to be 0.95 because you have to do one minus alpha. This gives you the area to the right. My degrees of freedom will be what? How many subjects did I have? 75 is my degrees of freedom. So my critical value is 1.665. Number four is finding your test statistic and your p-value. And then we need to make a decision and write a conclusion. Before I can do anything on step four, I need to go to stat, tests. Which test do I pick? Why do I choose the t-test and not the z-test? My population standard deviation is unknown. I have summary statistics, so I highlight statistics. The value from the null happens to be zero. X bar is 2.2. The sample standard deviation is 6.1. My sample size is 76, and this will be a right-tailed test, so I highlight greater than, and then we calculate the results. Based on the output here, what will my test statistic be? Not just a number, you need to tell me if your test statistic is a Z or a T, or it's T equals 3.14. 3.14 is going to be way out here at the end. And our p-value is teeny tiny, it's 0 0.0012. So would we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? And my conclusion? So this diet works, this low-fat diet works because the average weight loss was positive. Do you see how similar this is to what we did in the previous section? 
The only thing that changed is I'm using a t-test because I don't know the sigma. I have to use the sample standard deviation. In the next example, I'm given data. So I'm now going to put this data into my calculator, and then I'm going to do a t-test with raw data. So to put the data into our calculator, we hit stat, enter, and type it in. Once you have your data in your calculator, you want to go to the home screen. So you hit second mode. And then we know we're going to do a t-test because that's the section that we're in, but we need to read the problem to see what we actually need to do. Generic drugs are lower cost substitutes for brand name drugs. Before a generic drug can be sold in the United States, it must be tested and found to perform equivalent to the brand name product. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is now supervising the testing of a new generic antifungal ointment. The brand name ointment is known to deliver a mean of 3.5 micrograms of active ingredient to each each square centimeter of skin. So X bar for the brand name is 3.5. As part of the testing, seven subjects applied the ointment. Six hours later, the amount of drug that has been absorbed into the skin is measured. The amounts in micrograms are as follows. How strong is the evidence that the mean amount absorbed differs from 3.5 micrograms? This is what we're asked, the question that we're asked to answer. How strong is the evidence that the mean amount absorbed differs from 3.5 micrograms? My first step is to write my null and my alternative hypothesis. My null hypothesis is going to be what? Perfect. My alternative? And why did you choose not equal to? The word differs. That means not equal to. We're getting it. So will this be a left tail, right tail, or two tail test? Two tail. Y'all are getting it. So alpha is equal to what for this problem? 0 0.01. Well, that's what we're going to use. I trust them. Step three is to draw a picture. My picture will be a symmetric unimodal curve. I have a two tailed test, which means that my alpha is going to be split evenly over two tails. Alpha is 0.01, so what's this area right here? And this area right here is alpha over 2 as well, and that's 0 0.005. How do I get my critical values down here? Inverse what? Second vars inverse t, because this is a t distribution. My area will be 0 0.01 divided by 2, or you could type in 0 0.005. What are my degrees of freedom going to be? because I was given seven pieces of data. I used six for my degrees of freedom. And my critical value down here is negative 3.707. So what's this critical value right here? Positive 3.707. Step four is to find your test statistic and your p-value. We do that by going to the calculator. So we hit stat, test. This is a t-test, so I select number two. Now I have raw data. So I highlight data, and it changes what it asked me for it. What do we plug in for the value for the mean from our null hypothesis? My data is in list 1, so I'm okay with that. Leave the 1 alone. This is a two-tail test, so we highlight the not equal to, and then we calculate. And here is our output. Based on this output, what is our test statistic? Negative 2.95. So my test statistic is over here, negative 2.95. Based on this test statistic, would I reject or fail to reject? Oh, by the way, what's our p-value? Based on this p-value and this picture, would I reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? Fail to reject the null hypothesis. We could conclude that there is insufficient evidence to conclude that the generic drug differs from the brand name. Generic drug being different from the brand name was our alternative hypothesis. Because we failed to reject the null, I didn't prove the alternative, so I can't conclude that. Critical values for your t-statistic. Once again, if your area is to the left, your critical region is going to be to the left. Your test statistic is a t-score that's negative. How I would get that is inverse t alpha comma my degrees of freedom. If my area is to the right, I use inverse t, 1 minus alpha, and then my degrees of freedom are going to be n minus 1. If I have a two-tailed test, then my critical value is going to be inverse t, alpha over 2, and then your degrees of freedom. And it's going to be one positive and one negative. Whatever number you get, remember you got two of these, one positive and one negative.
but it's going to be the same number. Here's another problem. A computer software vendor claims that a new version of their operating system will crash less than six times per year on average. So here's their claim. Crashes less than six times per year on average. A system administrator installs the operating system on a random sample of 41 computers. N is equal to 41. At the end of the year, the sample mean of crashes is 7.1 with a standard deviation of 3.6. Can we conclude that the vendor's claim is false? Use alpha equals 0.05. We start by writing our null and our alternative hypothesis. What is my null hypothesis going to be? Look at the claim. Mu equals 6 and my alternative mu is less than 6. The next thing we do is identify what our significance level is. We were told that was 0.05 and then we need to draw a graph. The T distribution will be symmetric and unimodal. Will this be a left tail, right tail, or two tail test? So my alpha is going to all be over here on the left hand side and I need to find my critical value. How do I find that critical value? So we have second vars inverse T is number four. My area will be 0.05. What will my degrees of freedom be? 40. My critical value is negative 1.684. Now we have enough information that we can go to our calculator and do the t-test. Stat test. t-test is number two. Oh, I don't have raw data now. I have to use my summary statistics, so I changed that on my calculator. The value from the null hypothesis is six. x-bar was 7.1, and what was the standard deviation? 3.6. Our sample size was 41 and this is a left tail test and we calculate. There's our output. What is my test statistic? T is equal to 1.957. Z-scores go to 2, T-scores actually use 3 decimals. What's my p-value for this problem? 0.9713. My test statistic is way over here. This was a left tail test. My p-value is all this area over here. It's huge. Clearly, I will do what? I'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. So my conclusion is we can't conclude that the new version of operating system will crash less than six times a year. I would say his claim is false because I could not prove that it was true. And this wraps up section 9.3.